Alright guys, welcome back, another episode, here we are, we are inside Southside Boating and Fishing Shop in O'Connor. Today's episode, it's a little bit something different today, we are, it's coming into snapper season, it's actually what, we are July now, I'm seeing a lot of guys catching pink snapper off the coast of Perth waters, so we thought perfect opportunity and uh, we'll talk about really, if you're a beginner, how to tackle a tackle shop. Uh, when fishing for pink snapper. All right, here we have today, obviously, Justin, Southside Boat and Fishing. Billy here, obviously worked with Southside Boat and Fishing for the last six months. Billy is specialized in river and brim fishing. So if you have any questions in relation to that, make sure you hit up Billy, have a chat with him in the store. The guys are always open for conversations. Um, and yeah, thanks, Billy. All right. So then we'll get onto it. All right, so really what we're doing, this video is really about if you are, you know, are a beginner and you're wanting to fish for pink snapper in Perth waters, we're gonna try and provide you with some basic understanding for you to get out there, go for a fish and try and catch a pink snapper uh, from a boat. So, I mean, Justin's obviously had a bit of an experience, I think a bit of good experience catching what was it, pink snapper it was on like four pound gear or something four pound braid four pound braid okay, how, how heavy was that snapper uh 14.8 kilo nah, it's mad. four pound braid that's a big fish and that would have that would have taken a while to get i mean how long did that take to get to the boat that fight to 35 minutes 35 minutes fighting a fish yeah all right that's awesome light gear big fish oh everyone's dream but yeah, all right, enough of that. We'll, um, we'll get into this because I want to, we want to provide you with the most information we can in this video. Um, so from now, we will go on to rods. We'll look at all types of rods um, from, you know, beginner, intermediate to advanced. But this, we're going to sort of stick to beginner. Um, so something that doesn't break the budget too much. Um, so you can just get out there. So let's go. All right, so we've moved on to the rods. Justin and I are basically going to go through, what are we going to do? Someone, a beginner budget, what, say a mid-range, say two to four hundred dollars sort of range. Two to four hundred is a good start. That'll give you a full combo, you know, a rod, a reel, um, some braid, I would say. Uh, and we'll go through uh, the leaders after we go through these combos. And then we're going to go through an ultimate. So we're talking, what? five to a thousand dollars sort of combo plus, yeah. yep um you know if you're sort of into that advanced sort of level um but we are going to start two to four hundred dollar budget which will get you like a full combo to fish for pink snapper so justin's going to go through the specifics of this because he's he's the master at this stuff so all right so two to four hundred dollars will get you basically a combo like this this is obviously ocean legacy rod there justin ocean legacy slow element and that's the P3, um, Ocean Legacy Soil Element. P3 is a good starting point because it's soft enough for you to actually flick a bait out, but still hard enough to actually fight a fish, especially when you're in close and you're in that anywhere between 3 to 15 meters. Um, getting bricked really easy by snapper because they are a reef fish. And generally just a good quality reel. Um, sometimes a lot of people get confused between the quality of reel and quality of rod. Generally, the best thing to do is actually just pair a combo up that works together. That's the main thing. Um, and pairing a combo that works together just means you spent that $200 in fuel to get out there and all the other gear. Spend a little bit more money on your reel and rod because that's ideally what's gonna stop fish and help you land them. Doesn't have to be the most expensive, like this combo here is what we call entry level. So entry level, generally starting, from 100, 200, 3, 400, and around about that price range will get you the entry level, and purely because most of those reels that are on them aren't really the high end. So they're gonna be still good quality, give you a good few years for use out of them. For example, the Legalis, which is the LT6000D. You knock 40 pound braid on that, 50 pound braid, whichever one you like to go with. You can even use mono if you're a mono kind of fisherman because they have a really deep spool, so you can run your thicker mono on it. And yeah, purely that is what your entry level combo would look like. Like I say, good quality rod, that's key. Good quality reel with a smooth drag, and you're gonna stop most of the fish in your shallow water snapper fishing. 
Um, so we're yeah. saying, so we're saying, 40, 50 pound braid can, you know, going in entry level, can the guys put 20 and 30 pound braid on that reel if they choose? Also, you can run 20, you can run 30. Um, the only thing you don't want to really go too light is on your leaders. Yep. You still want to run the 50, 60 pound in in close, uh, purely because fish break you so easily in close. In fact, they're more of a challenge to land than deep water fishing. Yeah. And obviously, size wise, you know, we all coming into fishing entry level, we do want to catch that big monster fish, but you know, generally it's just great to be on the water. We just want to catch fish. So, you know, if the guy's got this entry level kit, you know, you could catch a fish from two kilos to five kilos, 10 kilos, quite easily, right? Easy, easy. easy. It just comes on, like I said, good quality. Quality is key. Um, like you saw, my big snapper, that was caught on a rod and reel that I think I in total costed about 300, 50 bucks? <laughs> four pounds. <laughs> but that was four pound gear, but that's awesome. Um, it just proves that buy it once, buy it right. Yeah. Awesome. It's it saves you money in the long run as well. So Alright, cool. Alright, so that is the uh, sort of two to four hundred dollar range. Um, we that, that that's a pretty good budget, as as Justin said, quality gear. Um, you know, you can get the cheaper gear, but spend a little bit extra will get you some nice good i mean that's what that's a dial a reel and an ocean legacy rod i mean that's uh you know it's up there with the best right um so yeah all right now this is for a little bit for the advanced sort of fishermen out there um we're gonna go the ultimate guide so you know if you have the budget to spend a little bit more you know the five to thousand dollar mark you know this is the real what do we say this is like i don't know the ferraris of uh the fishing life would you say there justin this would be one of the ferraris <laughs> of the fishing life, definitely <laughs> all right so i mean here we are i'll let justin go through it but he'll run through it i think we have clearly uh daiwa saltiga on there but he can go through the specifics so you know with those guys that have you know the bigger budget or want to spoil themselves we all like to spoil ourselves when it comes to you know the hobby that we love um, especially when we're doing it for a while you do want to get some of that primo gear uh, but here's another this is sort of the ultimate combo so i'll let justin run through what that is and you know roughly approximately what that would cost you so from the rod what's the rod so this is a yamaga blank the galaha p2-4 to four. yeah japanese roll rod so this rod is purely built, assembled, manufactured, right down to the fibers, all in Japan. They don't mass produce them, so you are up to there where they do produce just a few at a time, and it's all hand rolled and everything as well. So they generally start off for about 650 to 700, and that would be a Galaha. That will be starting, they do go up to the thousands and stuff like that. Uh, but again, new fishing in short, you don't need to spent too much money but sometimes like like Sean said it's good to treat yourself we do deserve it every now and then the reel that I would personally pair with this would be <laughs> the Saltiga BJ this is a good reel Ooh, good reel BJ standing for bay jigger purely bay in close powerful reel small spool compact design they go from 3500 to a 4000 and they don't get bigger than that and that's purely because they're designed for inshore use. Guys still use them offshore, you can use it. They are, like I say, designed for inshore. A reel like that, I think they're about 900. Um, and yeah, that's your full max seal reel. It is pretty much, it's up there in dial <laughs> top of the range. So you're ideally not gonna get better than that reel unless you're going with the Saltiga. And with the new Saltigas, they don't do the small sizes anymore. Oh. So okay. you're going to have to go with the Bay Jiggers from now on, whereas the older Salt Eagles, you got the 3500s. Yep, yep, yep. That's what these guys have now replaced. Yeah, okay. And um, what, what sort of line? So that's a 3500. I mean, we're still talking 20 pound, 30 pound, PE2, PE3. You can go 20 pound, 30 pound, again, 40 pound if you want to. 40. However you like to fish it is ideally up to you. And the beauty with these size reels, and specifically why I chose these two, is because they're going to allow you to run that heavier. But they're going to ride to run a lot light as yeah, well. Yeah, awesome, awesome. All right, well, there you go. So that's obviously, you know, your ultimate fishing combo there. We'll go on to line uh, hooks shortly. But that, yeah, I mean, for those guys that do want to spoil themselves, that's, I mean, that, yeah, that, that's the ultimate. I mean, that's something you sleep with at night, all right? I mean, come on. 
<laughs> that's why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, I mean, oh, that's good. All right, we'll, uh, we'll go over to some line now. Um, you know, something that Justin would uh, recommend to go on either one of these reels, and then we'll go from there. Stay tuned. All right, here we are. We're at the line now. So, you know, we're going to just show you what do we got? We've got Daiwa J Braid here. Um, there's obviously, you know, they start at what? 5, 10, 12, oh, 20 they pounds. It varies, varies pounds. right? It goes crazy. So, it, braid galore, basically. Um, but we're going to show you first if you wanted to, you know, spool up with braid. Um, we'll go through what size, what we'd recommend on both those reels. Um, you know, when it comes to searching for that elusive pink snapper in Perth waters. So, Justin, we have here obviously Daiwa, J Braid. You know, if we're on the salt, say for the two to four hundred dollar reel, um, the budget, you know, what braid would you recommend for the guys to basically spool up their width? So, two to four hundred dollar range. Um, I would go look, you can go any braid ideally. Um, the beauty about braid is. You get to pick what you want. You can run four strand, you can run eight strand. Um, as long as you're running, like I say, a good leader, you're going to be safe. J braid is a good braid. Um, I would probably recommend it on the two to four hundred dollar side um, here because it's got a good price point to it. Um, it's well priced. It's not overpriced, and you get good value for money out of J braid. Um, again, for that six thousand D Lagalus reel, I would recommend you can run forty pound on it. And the only reason I say 40 pound on that specific combo is purely because it's got a very deep spool. And you run 30 pound on it and you're gonna fit more than 300 meters, which ideally you don't need in close. Hmm. So you can run slightly heavier, which means you can fill up your spool a lot more. Um, a lot of the guys that shop with us know we don't believe in running backing because backing on a reel, it doesn't do anything, if anything, it jams up your braid. You can't fight a fish on it, so we always recommend that so run a slightly heavier braid and fill your spool up, or buy it off a bulk spool. Mm. And if you buy it off a bulk spool, you fill 500 meters on your reel. Sounds like a lot, but in four months time, bring the reel in, we spin the braid over for you, and you get the fresh braid from the bottom back on the top. W's. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah. That's good, good advice there. So we're talking 40 pound, you know, 30 pound, you know, some of the guys may want to run sort of lighter braid uh, on their reels. So, you you know, you would still recommend sort of J braid as a good starting point for those yes, guys as well. Definitely. Yeah, obviously, you know, some of you might not want to run 30, 40 pound. You might even want to go lighter. Um, have a bit of fun but yeah I, I, I would recommend J Braid I've obviously used it in the past as well uh, but uh, I've obviously switched over to Tasline now um, but yeah I do recommend J Braid, Daiwa it is good stuff for the price all right we're on to hooks so hooks are obviously important right because if you don't have a good quality hook what they bend they break they all sort depending on the size of fish or blunt don't hook your fish properly yeah there's there's multiple reasons why you want good hooks when it comes to fishing so we're obviously in front of the bkk range at the moment so you know let's talk let's talk pink snapper for the beginner there's a lot of methods out there for catching pink snapper um let's talk let's talk inshore for now right let's go um where you know we're we're anchored up we're burlied up inshore west side of a reef etc and we're doing the famous inshore fishing for pink snapper during winter so my personal i'd probably go say a two hook snell and depending on wind current i might have a tiny bit of weight on there i may not so if we were to go hooks justin you know what in that instance on a two hook snell what you know what size hook would you know would you recommend to the guys you know hooks aren't too expensive so you can you know if you did have a budget for that obviously come in see the guys tell us what your budget is first but generally hooks aren't too expensive so you can get the good quality hooks for you know on a budget um, so yeah I mean what size would we use on a two hook snail generally for guys are just starting out you know what would you recommend again everything depends on what beta person's running yeah um, Good one. I mean, so a lot of guys love to run a yellowtail, which is a streamlined, smaller fish. So obviously you're not going to run massive hooks because you're going to have too much hook exposure, yeah. which generally means when the snapper does grab the bait, the hooks are sticking way past its mouth. Yeah. So 
over there, I would run a five or six. Yeah. Preferably a five. Um, yeah, good choice. If you're holding your rod and you're waiting for the bite, I would. You can run a J hook, which is just straight. Or if you're putting in the rod holder with the drag slightly tensioned up, circle hook. Circle hooks generally just pull along the fish's cheek line and sets itself once it gets to the lip and you get a perfect corner lip shot. Um, if you're running slightly bigger baits like a scaly which is a slightly fatter fish or herring or even even squid, um, purely because squid is softer you want to kind of hook it twice mm. with the hook. Um, that's where your 6 7 is going mm. to play. So probably wouldn't run anything bigger than a 7 0. In fact, 7 0 is really big. Um, but again, I like to kind of use herring as well um, mm. for my enclose. And again, that's a bigger bait fish, so you kind of want a slightly a bigger hook with a bigger gape in it just for it to stick out a little bit more. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, different brands, different qualities. Yep. So that's obviously inshore, um, you know, that's with the snell. So, so for example, if the guys want to go, if you guys want to go, you know, offshore, so you see, you know, I, I love my offshore fishing, you see a lot of my content, we're, we're offshore, you know, we're miles out, so, you know, we're not going to use a, a, a snell with no weight, because I don't <laughs> think that's going to go anywhere. <laughs> um, so, you know, we generally, you know, we might go to a uh, Paternoster rig. You know, we all know what a Paternoster rig is. We either make them ourselves, we buy them all set up, ready to go. Um, you know, the hook size would be similar, right? You'd be going 7 0 hook. Um, obviously, depending on the size of fish that you're wanting to catch, will depend on, you know, how you lay out that bait on the hook. Now, one hook, obviously, you know, you could put a whole squid on there, but there's not much hook exposure and it's all bait. So, you know, generally, well, you adjust. But, yeah, and with snapper fishing, I mean, I learned that the hardest way, that big, big baits don't catch big fish. My big snapper was caught on a squid head. Yeah, and there you go. Not a freshly caught squid head, it was store bought. Mm -hmm. So, you're talking just your normal bait head of a squid, which is that big, on a small hook. And a lot of people believe you have to run big baits and big hooks to catch a bigger snapper. In fact, the smaller the bait and the smaller the hook, because snappers aren't like a dewfish and a mulloway where they can extend their mouth and actually engulf the bait. That's it. They actually bite the bait. Yep. So a smaller hook and a smaller bait means he's going to get into his mouth a lot better, which gives you a better chance of hooking your fish. And that purely just comes down to knowing the area that you're fishing and generally the size of fish you do catch in those areas will yeah. kind of lead you to what to run. Yeah, correct. All right, so, you know, we've spoken about the hooks, we're talking about braid, we're talking about rod, reel, size of mono, um, the size of braid, etc. Um, you know, if you wanted to set up your own rigs yourself, that, that's fine, there's plenty, I think there's plenty of YouTubes you, uh, out there that, you, you know, it shows you how to do it, but if you're just beginning uh, and just starting out of there, you really just want to be confident in you know what you're doing, especially in knots. I had an episode myself. I've been fishing for what ten plus years. So I was Justin, <laughs> and I had a big fish on the line, and I could, you can tell straight away when your knot fails or you're sharked, and you can tell it's got it's like it's all rigid, right? When it yeah. comes up, it's not a straight, basically slice of a shark tooth just cutting straight through your mono leader, right? Um, so, you know, even I make mistakes when I'm rushing on my line, doing my knots, etc. But, you know, if you're not confident, obviously Southside have, do have a knot, they do have their own rigs. I'll let Justin go through it. Um, this obviously looks like, what, a two hook snail with a bit of weight on it and mono leader. So I'll let Justin go through that. They're just inshore rigs, clearly by the name, inshore rigs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Justin, what's that? Well, what's on that? So this is made in school um, by my, my elves at night. <laughs> Elves um, at night. <laughs> my dad and Billy. <laughs> and myself. Um, but yeah, like again, like I'm saying, um, small hooks. And that's got a 6 on it. Yeah, and That's good what size. we trust. I like a 6 -o. Good size. Everyone, we always recommend 6 -os. That's just a 6 That's 6 of BKKs. So we specifically order bulk packs and of BKK. Get them in and we make up our rigs of the BKK hooks. Again, okay, that's just got a size 2 ball sinker on it. Mm, small. A um, 60 pound leader. Again, mm. a nice light, um, tough leader. And 80 pound, or is it, a, yeah, 80 pound swivel. Mm. 
and just a little goby just to help um, put a bit of light in yeah, the water when you're fishing. When you're fishing you know. And um, a lot of people ask us what's the crimp for? And the crimp is purely to stop that sinker from going all the way up to your swivel and causing your bait to hit the bottom and float off. Oh, yeah. You kind of want it to settle very gently and slowly through the water. Yeah. So if your sink is falling quicker than your bait, it means it's holding your bait upright and it's actually pulling it nicely downwards. Yeah, right. Okay, good. So, see, I just learned something then too. The see? idea of it. I don't know everything, so I got these guys for as well to help hey, me. I don't, I don't know everything <laughs> as well. I'm still learning as I go, man. It's I'm a, still it's learning. A, it's one of those games where, you know, you are, you're always learning. And, you know, what I had, my last video did, I did, I mistaked a fish, which I specifically thought was a black spotted rock cod, but then one of you guys told me it was a wiracod. And I'm thinking, what the hell is a wiracod? I had no idea what a wiracod is, but it looked identical to a black spotted rock cod. Thankfully, well, it actually, according to Wreckfish West, it's one star, and the black spotted is five star. Haven't compared the taste yet, but anyways, that's for another story. But as I was saying, you know, I don't know everything. I need you to help me, and we'll try and help you where we can as well, because we don't know everything. We're all learning. It's a great hobby, great passion. Um, but yeah, obviously, that's about it from us. I obviously just want to thank Justin, obviously for the time, shooting this how to tackle a tackle shop for fishing for pink snapper in Perth waters. Um, hope you've learned something. Nice quick edit for you for those that are just starting out. But obviously we did show you the ultimate combo there. I'm, I'm still thinking about it to be honest. Um, <laughs> and when I'm gonna get that, but <laughs> no. But yeah, we really hope you like this video. Make sure you get down to South Sides. The guys are always happy to have a chat. Doesn't matter of the time, um, obviously when they're open. Um, but come down for a chat, anything to do with fishing, boating, ocean lifestyle, make sure you get down here, have a chat to them and they will help you as best they can. And if they don't, I'm sure they'll find the information that they need to help you get on the water, catch a good fish and just have an awesome time on the water. But yeah, stay tuned for the next adventure. If you like this uh, little video, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And we'll see you next time. Yeah.